how to be his priority in life and not an option. Five secrets that really work. And this video is gonna really help you to get him to commit to you, to prioritize you, to want to spend time with you and invest into the relationship. And it's gonna help you prevent him pulling away, losing interest, dating other women, and or just not treating you like the queen that you are. So if you're done with him not prioritizing you or men not prioritizing you, comment I'm ready or I'm done in the comments below and let me know um, so we can really get this solved for you. And again, I'm Brody Boyd, if you haven't met me already, and I've been helping single men, single successful men for over 13 years to attract the right woman for them. So I have a unique perspective into what makes the bra male brain tick, which we're gonna be going into in this video more. So go ahead and like, share, subscribe to this video. If you like anything in the background, our lights, my shirt, whatever, and subscribe for more powerful videos like this to insights into the male brain. And please share this video with others, other single women you think can benefit. And also make sure to watch for a special secret bonus we'll have in this video on really how to be the queen and make him want you badly. So let's go ahead and dive right in to powerful secret number five, which is don't answer his calls and texts at night. So what this means is if a guy is texting you at night, if he's texting you too late and basically asking you to hang out, that's the worst, or just wanting to sext with you or flirt or send funny photos or sexy photos, basically trying to engage you at night, if you're responding to that, you're basically training him that you're available and you're definitely not seeing other men if you're in that stage where you can, you're not exclusive with him and it just shows that you're too available. And it also will train him that he could potentially um, hook up with you late at night or last minute or set up last minute meetings or set up last minute phone calls. Like that is not good because you're training him um, that you are too readily available. You're rewarding that, which you don't really want. You want him to value your time and you want him to prioritize you that you're not just available at the drop of a hat. And so that's why it's so important. And so what are some ways you can use this? Well, if he texts you at night, if he calls you late at night, let's say like after 7 p.m., I would say just don't even respond to him until the next day. For one, that's gonna make him wonder, what are you doing? Are you seeing another guy? Are you dating another guy? What's going on in your life? He's gonna think about you more, which is gonna make him start to desire you more, start to invest mentally into you more and emotionally. People don't fall in love when they're with you, they fall in love when they're away from you thinking about you. So that's the powerful thing that you're gonna be able to do when you do that. And um, so do other things. If you're like, well, how do I not text him back? I really wanna, I haven't heard from him for a while. Uh, read a book, you know, watch a show. Hey, talk to a girlfriend on the phone, text your girlfriend, text a family member, call a family member, play with your dog. Do something else so that if you're starting to train him that if he wants to, to do something with you, he needs to set up a date or he needs to talk to you in the daytime, especially if it's something sexual or wanting to hang out last minute. That's not okay. You're the queen, we're gonna talk about that in more and you don't wanna train him to do that. Now, when I was dating Antia, she was really good at um, texting me just during the daytime. Um, I would send her invites and she was really just responding with what worked for her, not what was working for me and that really sh showed me that uh, she respected herself and I couldn't just um, you know, hang out whenever we wanted to, whenever I wanted to. So um, it's a really good thing to, to start to practice with him. Secret number four, be busy and happy, but not too busy. So just like we mentioned in the last point, it's actually more effective if you actually are busy. So you actually have plans of things that you're doing. Look, if he wants to book out your schedule, he has to plan that out at least, let's say at least 48 hours in advance. You know, he has to plan those dates in advance so that he knows you're in demand and you actually are in demand. So you wanna create that where you have things going on, not just with work, but socially, going to events, going to mixers, hang out with girlfriends, hang out with guy friends, going on other dates, again, if you're not exclusive with him, um, you know, taking care of yourself, investing into yourself, um, doing things you enjoy, hobbies, passions, goals. So you need to create those things if you don't have them already so he can actually start to feel you're a woman in demand, you're a woman who is uh, scarce, you're a scarce resource like gold, like diamonds, that he needs to actually 
mine he needs to work for those diamonds you know he has to he has to search for those diamonds they're not just lying on the street right he has to purchase those diamonds with his time with his energy again you know this isn't about being a gold digger or a time but it is about with your time being a gold digger uh you want him to value your time <laughs> i don't know where i was going with that but you get what i'm saying so be busy and happy but not too busy now when i was dating antia this actually worked for uh effectively in the sense that she me and her lived in different cities we were both in oahu uh for those of you who don't know auntie my wife we were both in living in oahu she was in a different city uh we could only see each other so often because of that geographical barrier now if you don't have that working for you you need to create that with your time and what i said here about also not being too busy is if you're too busy he, you're not going to also give that opening for him to come in he needs to actually feel that there is an opening and space for him in your life so it's not about totally pushing him out and saying oh i'm not available for three weeks you know you have to make some space for not just him but any man you want to have in your life otherwise he's going to say why do you need me you're good you have everything you want i don't have anything to add to your life there's no value here for me to add so you have to actually have that space as well just not too much space right not too much space where you're just sitting waiting for him to text waiting for him to ask you out or waiting for a guy to come and rescue you you have to have some things going on and that's where the being happy comes in as well things that you enjoy and are doing in your life now if you haven't yet i highly recommend joining our magnetize your man dating support group where we talk a lot about these things you can ask questions you can hear the shares from other women who are st struggling with these things as well which you can get by going to mymfacebookgroup.com or sorry mymfbgroup.com or go to facebook and just type in magnetize your man you'll be able to find that group there highly recommend it now powerful secret number three date other guys if not exclusive i've alluded to this as well but what this means is you are responding to guys online you are going on dates with guys online you are on phone calls with guys who are interested in you you're talking to guys who are interested in you you're opening yourself up now why is this so important this is so important because guys i believe most guys i know i have it have a sixth sense that they know when the woman they're dating is dating other guys or is meeting other guys now this is not necessarily a bad thing this is a good thing if you're exclusive that's a bad thing now if you're not exclusive and i'll talk about what to do if you are exclusive but if you're not exclusive this trains him that you are in demand you are like the bachelorette you are a prize and other guys are interested in you he should probably be interested in as well this is the social proof principle we tend to want that which other people have or wanting as well just like when you are um seeing a best-selling book or you are seeing all the tickets getting sold out for a concert you want to go to you better act now because it must be really popular so you want to be that you want to be this the highly sought after woman now you only can create that by dating other guys by going online responding to messages um asking guys for their opinion on things having those conversations responding to guys who are in who are uh interested in you now even if you're not really interested in them it can be good to have those conversations and at least to explore that even if there's a tiny chance because you're opening yourself up and the guys that you are interested in they'll see that you're a woman in demand they'll feel that from you so you really want to create that and i know with me and Antia, when we were dating she actually was dating another guy and um i found out about it when we were maybe three months in and i started f checking in with myself and i had to say wow how do I really feel about Antia? And I had to come to the conclusion that I actually had feelings of love for her. And I told her that when I found out she was she was seriously dating another guy. And I that was when we became exclusive. I asked her, I told her I just, just want to, you know, I don't remember exactly what I said. You know, I just want to be exclusive, something like that. And we decided to do that. So that was powerful. So that's how you can use that principle. And it's highly effective. Powerful principle number two, be the queen and set boundaries. Now, what this means is being the queen is about respecting yourself. It is about um, setting boundaries, having standards, not accepting bad behavior, being willing to walk away if you're not getting the behavior you want, um, saying no and having limits and also treating yourself well. And that's what respecting yourself is. There's like the level of behavior you're going to allow from other people the level of a standard for how you live your life um, the things that you do the things that you accept 
And why this is so important is because when a man respects you, he's much more likely to prioritize you. He's much more likely to see you as a prize, as the queen. That's the paradox. You might think by setting boundaries and telling him, no, I'm not ready for that, or no, that doesn't work for me. You know, we need to do it this, this way. Um, he starts to actually respect you more. He actually desires you more because of that. So respecting yourself more. So what are some other ways you can apply this is by having a standard, writing down what your standards are with men, with him, keeping those standards when he's not meeting them, that you let him know this doesn't work for me. You know, if this is how our relationship is going to be, if this is the way you're going to treat me, like that doesn't work. I'm like, you could even say like, I'm a queen. I, I only accept this from guys. And he also knows because the subtext of that is the context of that is if you, he's not meeting that need, if he's not meeting that standard, that you're gone. And that there's other guys who will meet that standard. There's other guys you can be dating that will meet that standard because you value yourself. And at that point, he has to make that decision. Either he steps up, he stops doing it, or you have to be willing to walk away. And that's where that respect comes. Um, you know, generally the person with the most power in any relationship is the one who's the least attached, the one who's most willing to walk away. So you have to find that within yourself, which helps with some of the other things help with that, which being, being busy, having a life you enjoy, having goals, that's going to really help with that. So be the queen and set those boundaries. Now, we actually created a powerful, powerful ebook that's all about how to do this and how to really trigger his desire to make him crave you, make him prioritize you, make him beg and plead for you, in fact, to be with him. To get this book, it's brand new, hot off the press. We have some incredible bonuses with it as well. Go check it out at triggerhisdesire.com. Even just the page that we created, the letter that we created for us, so many gold nuggets in there, triggerhisdesire.com. I swear this, if you apply these principles, if you get the book, you apply those principles, transform your relationship with him, with men, it will never be the same. Psychological triggers that make him crave you on a emotional level that is beyond his control, really when you apply these. So check out the book. Highly recommend. Get it now while it's fresh, while we have a discount. And I know you're going to love that. So triggerisdesire.com to pick that up right now. Now, let's go ahead and dive into powerful secret number one, which is talk about common goals together. Common goals. So when you're with him, don't just talk about superficial things. The weather, the TV show, book you like, what he was doing last weekend. Also bring in things that have more depth, things that have more of a sense of uh, meaning to them. For example, what are his goals? What are your goals together? So talk about common goals. This could also mean asking him about his values. It can mean asking him about what his dreams are for the future, where he wants to travel, what he wants to achieve, what he wants his life to look like, what are his family goals, children goals, all those things. Why is this important? Because now he, a man will start to see you differently. He'll start to see you more in the realm of life partner rather than hookup. You know, when you hook up with someone and you're just friends with benefits, it's so easy to just say jokes together, have fun, laugh, talk about kind of meaningless, pointless things, talk about other people. But when you're asking him about the more important things, goals, passions, values, religion, politics, those things even, values, you're bringing a different level to the relationship, a different level of conversation. And he can start to, you can start to explore where you have those commonalities. What are the things that you guys want to create together potentially in the future? That'll make him prioritize you because he'll start to see you as somebody who's on a different level than the other girls he might be seeing or other women or other people in his life. Now, this is somebody I can build a life with. This is someone I can prioritize. I experienced this when I was single and dating. I had hired my own dating coach. I had experimented a lot with what you might call the pickup artist community. I met a lot of women. I was dating a lot of women and I started coming to the conclusion that what I really wanted, I didn't really want to just date anymore. I wanted a power partner. I wanted somebody to share my life with. And when I came to that conclusion, that was uh, shortly after that, I decided I want a power partner in my life. Shortly after that is when I met Antia. 
and uh, and she was fitting that. I actually wrote out a, a list of what I wanted in my ideal partner, what I wanted that life to look like. I called it my story. And I told Antia the first night we met, I said, wow, you're the girl for my story because that is what I'd written down. That's what I created. So that's a different level of conversation. Guys who are really looking for that, who are wanting that, or at least a part of them is wanting that, that's going to come out and that's the kind of guy you're going to attract. And the guy that you're with, that's going to help raise him to that level. Or it might just become clear that you guys are just on totally different pages and it's really time to just cut your losses and move on before you waste either your time or his time, you know, for whatever he's looking for, whatever you're looking for long term. So I would love to hear from you. Comment below. When do you feel like you are his priority or when do you feel like you are not his priority? What things does he do that makes you feel like you're that priority? And what things does he does he do that makes you feel like he just doesn't care that frustrates the heck out of you? I would love to hear that below to help us with future videos. What is your experience with your guy or men in general? When what it looks like when they are prioritizing you, what things you do that make him prioritize you or what it looks like when he's not and what things you might have done that led to that. Very fascinating. And now since you stayed all the way to the end, I have a powerful bonus secret for you, which is to bring things back to where you started. You know, how a relationship starts is so key. One thing I love to say is how a relationship starts is generally how it will continue. And so what it means to bring things back to where you started is what did it feel like when you were first dating him? What did it feel like when you were first meeting him? What were the positives? Was it fresh? Was it exciting? Was it passionate? Were you guys joking a lot? Were you guys light? Were you having fun? Were you excited about the future together? Where did that drift off? Once you can come to that first realization, you'll know that this is so powerful because if you want the relationship to get back on track, generally all you have to do is get back to what you were doing when you first met him. If it was good in the beginning, if it wasn't good in the beginning, then maybe it's not the right fit because again, how the relationship starts is generally how it will continue. It's probably not gonna get a whole lot better. If it started the first couple months you were dating each other was just a disaster it's probably not going to get much better you guys probably aren't compatible but if it was good and there were great things you need to get back to those things bring back the life bring back the joy so how are some ways you can do this first off like i said think about what were those positive things what were you doing who were you being in those beginning stages of dating him and then actually start to do those things so maybe you you realize when you were first dating you were actually uh, much more playful with him. You were actually joking around more. And then all of a sudden you started getting more serious as you felt like he wasn't doing the right things. And then he started doing the wrong things even more. And then you became this nagging, um, you know, emasculating or just unpleasant woman to be around with him, maybe unconsciously, but you know, be honest with yourself. Where were you maybe doing some of those things? Now get back to being that fun you. Get back to doing the things he enjoyed. You know, was there a way you smiled at him? Was there a body language you had? Were you guys talking about things that you both enjoyed before you started arguing? Get back to those things. Bring it back into the relationship. How can you do that tonight? How can you do that today, tomorrow? Bring up those topics. Maybe share a fun memory with him. Remember that time we went to on that trip to Catalina Island? Or remember that time we were traveling we went skiing on that mountain you know remember when you fell and that was like so scary but then we realized it was just all powder and you were just we were laughing for like a half an hour you know whatever that was find those fun stories those fun memories maybe send them send them a photo and bring it back so that you guys can bring back those good feelings and get back to that place he'll probably so what happens is when you start bringing that back he'll also remember part of him will remember what he was being like in those moments and he'll start to become come back to that part of him that was more attentive that was prioritizing you more that was giving you more of his attention and time and energy so bring it back and trigger that association in his brain to have that love have that joy again i know with me and Antia, we are constantly uh, doing things that we enjoyed from the very beginning you know, we go on these little dates together. We go on trips together. We go to Disneyland. We go to SeaWorld. We'll go to the beach. Things that we did from the very beginning that really brought us together. We'll have those interesting conversations. We'll talk about books. We'll talk about ideas. And I think that keeps our relationship really solid and really strong because we'll always fall back on the things that really work. Not that things get off track a whole lot, but we've kind of ritualized it. So you ritualize it with your, your guy. How can you set up maybe a date night every week where you're doing something you guys know from past experience you're both going to enjoy it's not going to be any arguments it's not going to be a lot of conflict 
it's just something that's more of a safe bet we both enjoy this it's not and uh and just make that a ritual a routine very powerful so if you like these principles please like share subscribe for more powerful videos like this that we'll be having coming to you and um and bring other girlfriends as well along the journey with you share this inspiration share these ideas if they're struggling with her guy and next i also have a powerful video for you i highly recommend watching if you haven't which is the five feminine traits that men find irresistible in a woman you should be able to get over here i'll be posting the video over here and again if you haven't got our book yet trigger his desire highly recommend that go to triggerhisdesire.com i know you're going to love it read that there all the information there it's going to really help you with your guy get things back on track get him craving and wanting you and even if he's rejected you before or pulled away or even hasn't contacted you for a month so much love hope that helps talk to you later in our next powerful video bye bye